While filming his amazing documentary, Dream Big, director Mark Martinez interviewed now deceased bodybuilding legend Doug Brignoli, and the topic of Sam Fussell and his book, Confessions of an Unlikely Bodybuilder, came to light. Now, if you haven't seen Mark's movie, Dream Big, you need to go watch that right away because it's an incredible piece of work. Mark kindly provided me with some of the outtake footage from that in-depth interview, shedding some light on the events and characters that inspired Sam's book. Now, Mark did all the editing for this, so please, again, support Mark's work and give him some feedback on his wonderful documentary, Dream Big, in the comments. And if you haven't yet seen the documentary, Dream Big, the links for where to watch it are also in the description. So I don't remember exactly what year it was. I think it was like around 1985, 86, and right around there, late 80s, a guy named Sam Fussell came to our gym. Tall guy, you know, big bone structure. Um, and none of us knew anything other than his name was Sam Fussell. We didn't know that his parents were academics. We didn't know that he was doing what he was doing in part as a project, as a, as a, as a book project. Uh, but he came in there to, we thought, just to work out and do what the rest of us were doing, was get big and develop a physique. And he entered a contest, and he, I don't even remember how well he did in the contest. And then shortly after all this, this book comes out called Muscle by Sam Fossil. And I think the subtitle was something like uh, The Adventures of an Unlikely Bodybuilder or something like that. Um, and he talks about how, you know, he, his parents suffered having a child that wanted to be a bodybuilder uh, rather than being, you know, a professor of some academic subject. Anyway, the reason I'm mentioning it is because, because he wrote about his experience in our gym Calling it a different name, my, the, gym of my, the name of my gym was Brignoli Fitness. He didn't call it that. Uh, he wrote about the owner of the gym called Raul. Clearly he met me. He might argue that he didn't, but there are pictures in the, in the book of our gym. People have asked me if I think his book is a good book or, or not. And I would say it's not exactly a truthful book in the sense that the gym where he worked at was not called that. The owner of the gym was not called that. The owner of the gym did not criticize a guy in the locker room for having high body fat because I would never have done that. He even at one point said something like Bill Pearl bodybuilded for the sake of, of, of the art, whereas Doug, Raul did it for the sake of business. That's not at all true. In fact, the opposite is probably more. Bill Pearl has been a much better businessman with the game than I have ever been. I, yes, we both had gyms. He had multiple gyms. I, I've never commercialized bodybuilding as well as I could have. However, the book is true in the sense that metaphorically, the sport is filled with people with a high degree of obsession who would be willing to sleep in their car in the parking lot of the gym, even though he didn't and said he did, right? There are people who are completely obsessed with their body fat and, and would say derogatory statements to someone else who's not as lean as they are because they don't have any tact. It isn't true about the people he was talking about in the gym. Some insiders could see, like Lonnie Teeper, who wrote about the book, said it's obvious that he's referring to Raul as Doug Brignoli and he's actually mixed some characters. He took Kelly Riley, who was a top female competitor at the time working out at her gym, and it kind of mixed her personality traits with somebody else and sort of created a character. You know, I think the book is a good read. It's intelligently written. If you want to sort of get a, a glimpse of what the sport is like, it gives you a, a, a fairly good glimpse of that side of the sport. There's a really, really positive side of the sport too. But if you want to see the sort of seedy, weird, obsessive part of the sport, you know, that's a good book and it's fairly accurate in that, in that regard. But I would, not, I would not call it an accurate book. I mean, if, if, I, if he was sitting here with us right now, I think you would have a really hard to, time denying that the book was written loosely about us and him in my gym and that Shangri-La was Brignoli Fitness. <laughs> it, it's almost unfair to highlight that aspect only because heaven knows Bill Pearl was the ultimate gentleman in the sport. And I think anyone who's known me for 
20, 30, 40 years would say, I've always been diplomatic, I've always been cordial, I've always been polite, uh, I've always been caring, considerate. I mean, so to portray people in the sport as being, you know, greedy and, you know, irreverent, insensitive, uh, that they're just animals, is, is not an accurate representation of the game.